Uh, so, uh, hello everyone, guys. Uh, I'm very thrilled that I'm today uh, with you. Um, and uh, I would like to talk a little bit about uh, approach of, uh, oh, sorry, sorry for that. Uh, a little bit about leveraging well-structured uh, themes for the project success. So I was intr introduced a little bit uh, before, uh, uh, but uh, what uh, needs to be added probably is that I'm a CTO uh, in the awesome studio uh, and also I'm a co-founder. So my point of uh, view on the creating the project, it's both uh, as a developer uh, and also someone that needs to meet, you know, the expectation of the uh, business side uh, of the you know, client and so on. So uh, I will talk uh, about, you know, way of thinking, uh, how to approach the projects, and also what we, uh, what we've, uh, what we are doing to accomplish the project success. Uh, so first of all, uh, maybe uh, so-called agenda, what I will be talking about. Uh, so way of thinking, like I said, um, the importance of planning ahead when we are uh, working on the long-term projects, because projects are not only, you know, just uh, build a website and ship it and publish it and for forget about them, but it's uh, a long, uh, long process uh, that can take like uh, not uh, only a weeks, months or so, but it might be much more longer. Uh, I will talk about uh, a little bit about the tool set uh, and libraries that we choose uh, to accomplish these goals. Uh, and uh, what, how we are creating the project architecture, uh, just to you know, um, meet the expectation of long-lasting projects. Uh, and last but not least, uh, what is important in the project is how uh, people are working in the uh, while doing this uh, this project and developing it in teams and so on. So uh, let's uh, think about uh, and maybe define uh, the project that succeeds. So the project uh, that succeeds uh, needs to meet some uh, few bullet points uh, so which is delivered on time and within budget. This is probably like the, uh, the most important thing if you are uh, on the business side of uh, the we website development. Uh, from the perspective of uh, the developer, uh, there, is, uh, there, those, there is uh, very important to uh, create the website that is bug free and easy to maintain in the future. So uh, while combining this, uh, this, uh, all of those points, uh, we are really uh, going for the uh, client, uh, client happiness. Uh, and uh, while talking about the happy, happy client, the happy client is when uh, the, the website is working smoothly. And for example, uh, the team uh, of the client, like, I don't know, maybe marketing team, uh, is easy, you know, for them, it's, it's easy to, you know, handle the website, to, you know, manipulate the content and so on, to build like a new sub pages uh, and easily in, a, you know, in a quick, a quickly timely manner and so on and so on. So basically to, uh, you know, do it right, we need to put some effort uh, in a project to, to meet those expectations. So, uh, but let's think about what the project is and how the pro process of the project looks like. Uh, most common uh, project um, uh, has like a few phases. Uh, when you are, uh, I don't know, a developer, probably you will be involved in like uh, the development, the maintenance pro uh, phase of the project. Uh, however, uh, before that, uh, we have like workshops uh, in which uh, while we are, for example, trying to figure out what the client really uh, needs, uh, what are the client's expectations uh, from, the, from the project and so on. And normally it takes some days uh, just to, you know, uh, get the feeling of uh, what the client will expect from the website. After that, uh, there comes the, pa the part in which the designer is involved. Uh, and back in, the, in, this, uh, in this phase, uh, the graphic designer creates the user interface, uh, creates the user uh, experience uh, part of the project, and so on. And normally it takes uh, a few weeks. Uh, if we are lucky enough uh, as developers, we are probably involved in this, uh, this phase. And you know, we can uh, give some, I don't know, 
uh, give some uh, information that hey, this is doable or this is not doable, because uh, you know sometimes the designers uh, think that <laughs> if they paint the website as I don't know uh, some flea or something like that, it still will be working uh, on the web. But it's not like that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, after that, there comes those phases that probably is uh, very inter interesting for us, which is the development and the maintenance. And if you see how long it can take, you know. The development of the MVP probably takes from weeks to months. Uh, it really depends on the scale of the project. But after that, uh, there comes the maintenance part. It, and it can take years, especially when we are building for the enterprise. Uh, and, you know, it's big companies cannot afford to, you know, rebuild uh, their website every, every year and so on. So uh, what they expect from the developers is to uh, create the long-lasting project, uh, which they will be able to uh, extend uh, in the future. Uh, so this is like very important thing to do. So uh, what not to do? It's very, it's very important not to jump into the development. You know, right after you receive the uh, UI from the you know from the designer, you get the Figma, and what's what's what you really what really uh, you are starting to doing. Uh, it's better, you know, just to spend one, one or two days just to think through the whole Figma design and so on. M for example, uh, when we are developing the, the projects, we are spending some time just to know th the project, uh, think about the reusable, reusable components, identify them, and, you know, write down every single uh, page uh, what some, something like uh, acceptance criteria. When, uh, when the project will uh, will be successful and when the uh, view on which we are working will be accepted as a, uh, as a, the ones that should uh, look, uh, look like so uh, what is uh, what if we are not doing it right m maybe we can in, in the future we can uh, find ourselves in the situation in which you know after one year uh, of development of the extending of the website uh, there comes you know another change request from the client and uh, we say that okay uh, you want another sub page but it will take like 100 hours and why because we didn't think through it uh, for example we built some or hard coded some page templates and right now any any you know even a small change can like takes uh, a lot of hours and it's it's building, um, you know, it's or rather uh, it's it's destroying our credibility uh, in uh, eyes of the clients, and it's really not uh, not that good, uh, especially uh, those kind of situations happens when, for example, uh, companies are trying to build very uh, very fast a new website and they are going for I don't know. Uh, building the website but not developing it. Uh, what I mean is that they are using tons of plugins, uh, page builders, and so on and so on, and uh, and they find they are finding themselves in the situation in which there is no option for further uh, for further development of the website. And basically, this is uh, literally what's happening uh, for our clients because they are coming to us with uh, websites that are very sluggish, are working very slow. Uh, and they are not able to, you know, build any sub pages for them. So uh, what we uh, tried to, you know, do to not be that company that has uh, that create creates those uh, kind of projects is that we uh, try to standardize ev everything. So uh, if as what does it mean the standardization? The standardization means that you are building a process, building a process in which uh, in which you are shipping the quality products uh, quality products uh, that are easy uh, for not only are not good only for the client but also for the team that develops them and uh, what we standardize is to how to develop components how to you know uh, decompose uh, the whole project uh, and after that uh, when we have like uh, while working in with the rule of uh, divide and conquer probably you know uh, this uh, this rule from algorithms or something like that uh, then the ease of uh, code review 
uh, give us an extra boost of creating the quality software and with the uh, proper uh, automatization then you are like really uh, really agile we can in agile way uh, create uh, a product so uh, what we uh, how we achieved it uh, we achieved it with uh, a set of technologies so uh, we've uh, built uh, our, our own boilerplate while we were tr searching for uh, for solution that will be right for us, uh, and we've built the Juniper. A Juniper is basically uh, mm, to, uh, a so some tool set uh, of few libraries uh, that uh, are enabling us for, cre for to create uh, very fast uh, websites that uh, are coming are working with the Gutenberg and they are easy to uh, maintain in terms of uh, CI CD process and so on so we are using timber bedrock uh, ACF uh, blocks uh, and also some uh, Cypress if there is a need for the uh, unit test on the front-end side and so also page uh, PHP code sniffer just to you know uh, make uh, make the cooperation a little bit easier but what was uh, our idea behind creating the uh, the those uh, this boilerplate? Because probably uh, you've got tons of boilerplates uh, on the market. So uh, first we had like a basic assumption, uh, which was like avoid endless functions PHP files, which is very common uh, in a project that are write uh, badly. Uh, and also separate uh, UI with business logic. So uh, with this uh, in mind, uh, we've tried to you know, structure the project uh, as uh, good as it uh, can be. But how to do that? The best way uh, and uh, to do that is to you know, go for the basics, and the basics are the design patterns. Probably uh, you know, or I hope you know, those uh, two books uh, that are very important. Uh, if you are a, a engineer uh, working on uh, day uh, on regular basis with the code uh, then probably you had uh, a chance to uh, to read clean clean code or maybe you know the uncle bob or bob martin uh, and also there is a book about it's much more um, heavier <laughs> let's say uh, design patterns in when where you can find you know uh, some uh, ground rules of how to build uh, a solid uh, object-oriented uh, object-oriented project. So, so uh, with uh, this um, this uh, thought uh, the, uh, that was uh, like a ground rule for for our project, uh, we've built like a structure uh, as uh, in all of the boilerplates. So we've just um, split. Uh, the, we are just splitting each every every project in uh, Guten for. Into the blocks for the Gutenberg, uh, for the Gutenberg, and also placing uh, in a uh, in a way that is well organized the uh, business logic, the custom post types, taxonomy, and so on and so on. Just to you know, uh, have it uh, just to make it uh, easy to you know navigate uh, for the for the project and to uh, help uh, build a project in an object oriented way. So. Uh, as I've mentioned uh, before, uh, design patterns are very important in the in the in the pr while you are thinking about the project architecture. Uh, and uh, what is um, what is uh, important that in the WordPress uh, we have like total freedom, and the freedom uh, has also uh, its costs. So uh, freedom in the WordPress, uh, you know, it they do not give us the guidance uh, how to write uh, good code. Uh, we only can find in uh, the codex the uh, functions, how they are declared, what are the uh, functionality of the functions that you will be using. But if you will try to find like the uh, ultimate uh, guide how to write the code, then it's very, very hard to find it. So uh, what we wanted to do uh, is to search for the you know, for the uh, for the way how to create the WordPress projects uh, in the in you know, uh, in the way, uh, in the world of the design patterns, and the closest thing uh, that is also implementable easy in the uh, in the WordPress uh, is MVC-like pattern, and it can be done by the timber. So, uh, 
how it really uh, looks like in the real life uh, example. Let's say that we want to uh, want to create some um, I don't know job board and so on. Probably you've uh, done it like a lot of uh, times. So what what is the model for this kind of uh, for this kind of job board? So uh, a model uh, in the this uh, the view in this pa uh, this pattern is a representation of the data. So uh, in the closest thing to the data implementation in the WordPress uh, is a custom post a post type, uh, and uh, we and when we are creating and we are thinking about the the database, this is the this closest thing that we can find because normally we are not we do not have the same you know uh, records uh, as in older frameworks PHP ra uh, frameworks but uh, this is uh, a little bit different uh, in the WordPress. After that, mm, we have the controller and the controller is the layer uh, that mm, will be working uh, with both views, uh, with view and also the data model. So. Uh, you can, while you are doing uh, this approach, there's a very, uh, you are building the unique uh, layer uh, of, the, of the logic uh, between, you know, uh, something that is being stored not only in the database, but you can also use the, you know, uh, files and so on. So uh, with this approach, you are getting really closer to, to you know, separate uh, totally different layers of the, uh, of the project itself, and at the end, uh, with the tweak file, uh, when we are passing the context, for example, to the to the views, uh, to the view, uh, we are able to you know show the and generate the HTML uh, an easy way uh, to you know just uh, just to keep everything separated. And uh, what is like the final effect for for this? First of all, we have like cleaner uh, architecture, so we have uh, front end, back end totally separated. Uh, it's uh, and uh, this is like was our first goal when we were uh, building the 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 Juniper boilerplate. And uh, something that is additional to that is that when you are decomposing the the whole uh, the whole team, you are able easily to you know. A separate uh, CSS or JS for each com Gutenberg component. And what do you have uh, after that? Uh, like I said before, there's like tons of projects uh, which uh, which has built uh, with you know the uh, the page builders and so on. Uh, and while they are build built with the page builders, you probably saw uh, most of them have some problems with, uh, with the speed and so on. It's due to uh, that they, uh, they, you know, the way how they works, they are, they are generating uh, a lot of uh, bloated code and so on and so on. So one of our projects, for example, that was previously uh, built, with the, uh, built with the page builders, we just rewrote, rewrote the uh, front-end part and then we reduced uh, by a lot at the speed of the uh, of the website uh, so if you if you are trying to you know uh, make the uh, the project to work much more faster then it's very uh, very good to uh, build with uh, proper uh, with the proper uh, architect uh, so uh, what else do we really uh, get uh, not uh, in it in a manner of you know uh, technical stuff uh, while we are working uh, with the with the team, uh, and we are all using the same boilerplate, then it's much more easier to you know navigate through the project if it's you know if it's, it's a standard thing in your company. So uh, with that uh, with that you get is much more easier code review process because you have smaller components, and when you are working with a team, then everyone knows uh, how to you know approach approach it and know what's uh, what for what bugs for for example they can uh, can search for so yeah basically this is uh, what you get from the uh, s from the nice and clean architecture we've also used um, the bedrock uh, as a you know as a base a base uh, base for our projects uh, due to the uh, to, due to the advantages that it gives, and it gives a well-structured, uh, well-structured project, 
and it's uh, not only you know changing the directories and so on but it gives like uh, a lot of cool, cool features that enables uh, the whole process to work smoothly and those process is that we are much more easy with we can easy uh, we are easily uh, able to maintain uh, the whole CI CD process and so on. So, what gives us the bedrock? Bedrock are giving us the dependency management system uh, with the composer. Uh, it gives us uh, handling uh, different setup of the environments like development, staging, production, and so on. Uh, and it uh, also is uh, quite good if you, in terms of you know storing the whole project uh, in the Git repository because you are you know. You are not storing all the WordPress uh, files uh, in the repository. You are just uh, keeping the theme, uh, only keeping the theme and the most important files. So, uh, with uh, you know making, so just I just recommend usage of the Bedrock R. So even if you are not using uh, any specific uh, theme or you are using your own theme, and uh, at the end uh, we what we've done. Uh, and what we accomplish at least is that we, I hope so at least, we finally uh, uh, ended uh, the war between what is better than tabs or the spaces. So uh, in our CI/CD uh, CI/CD process, one of the one of the thing is that uh, we are trying to uh, trying to keep the WordPress uh, coding standards. So it's with the GitHub actions uh, and uh, everything else that's much more easier and you know it can it can speed up uh, also or get the team um, work much more efficient than if you are not doing that so uh, thank you very much for your attention uh, if you are looking for uh, the juniper and so how you know, want to you now just uh, give a look into it, uh, then the QR code will lead you to the uh, to our repository. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you again, Tomas. If there are any questions, please raise your hand. Okay, I imagine that you had a question. <laughs> Thanks. Hi. Uh, Hi. So, um, you have. Um, in your, um, sorry, I can do it. Uh, in the structure of, of the um, team, I, I've seen that is a, an ACF JSON yes. folder. Uh, why did you choose to leave the files there instead of uh, moving uh, everything to the code base? Uh, ACF uh, JSON files are there because you know, when we are sharing uh, the um, the code between uh, developers, there's always a need to synchronize all of the fields. So basically, this is something that, uh, from my perspective, needs to be there. So this is why we are we have it in our theme. Uh, and if you are, you know, just uh, getting the code, uh, you just you know click the synchronize and everything works. So okay. Uh, don't you have any problems with the production website that uh, overwrite uh, the fields and some stuff uh, like that? Sometimes it happen, uh, okay. happens, but uh, you know it just it's just a matter of a good uh, review process because if someone you okay. know changing the is changing the database uh, the ACFs and so on, then uh, in the review process we see what has changed. And we are trying to merge it not to avoid any conflicts on the production and so on. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Before, you spoke about continuous integration. And I was uh, wondering, are you um, continuously deploying uh, only the theme to a WordPress website that uh, resides, for example, in a VM? Or are you able to integrate uh, a continuous integration system with uh, um, a, a WordPress web website deployed on Docker or Kubernetes? Uh, normally, we are not using Docker uh, on a regular basis. But in the, uh, while we pre created the CI CD process, we are uh, pushing not only the uh, theme itself, but we also uh, are trying to keep uh, on every uh, single 
on every single environment the same uh, plugins, for example. So when we are updating some libraries uh, via Composer, then we are pushing uh, them also with the, with the CI CD process. Fine, thank you. Hi, Thomas. It was a really interesting speech. Uh, Thank you. I really uh, appreciate that. Uh, I have a few questions. So, okay. Quanto tempo abbiamo? Okay. <laughs> okay. I start with the first one. Um, I, um, I see that you choose to put the business logic inside okay. the, the team. Yes. Why put the inside the team instead of uh, putting in a, in a feature plugin, for example? Uh, Basically, uh, while we are developing the, uh, the business logic and we think about the business logic, uh, in most cases it's a one-time uh, one shot, let's say. For, so for if we are developing a custom theme for the, uh, for the client, then we, are, we know that it will not be something that be will, will be reusable. Uh, and this is why we are not going for the plugins and so on. And also by the business logic, I mean the you know the manipulation of the data before you just uh, show it on the uh, you know on the view. So basically, uh, getting the uh, custom post type data is also business logic in, in terms of you know. Uh, okay, so you basically uh, use the t the team uh, like uh, a wall application. Yes, exactly. Okay. Okay. Uh, second question. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, how you document uh, and uh, share uh, the, your development practice uh, across uh, your team? Do you document? Uh, do, do you write something? How to do this? Uh, uh, we have like we do not have like a very big uh, team, so it's much more easy to you know uh, to share the experience. But what we are doing is uh, on a regular basis we are trying to. Uh, make the awesome camps, let's say. Uh, the, this is the, our meetings in which we are, for example, sharing a knowledge uh, uh, between the team. Uh, everyone knows, uh, and everyone knows uh, the structure of the theme that we've created because they are uh, norm on a regular basis, they are doing some extra code for it, so they're uh, working on it. And mm, basically, uh, in most cases, we are just when we are starting for the projects, let's say, then the pro the project documentation is uh, in most cases created in the project management system, so everyone uh, has an access to that. So I don't know if I answered your question, but <laughs> yes, uh, you're quite enough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other one who has questions? Okay. Before, you spoke about uh, um, keeping uh, the WordPress coding standards mm -hmm. in, um, in your repositories, but mm, WordPress also has uh, uh, file naming standards, for example, that are not compliant with PSR4. Yes. So how do you manage it uh, to um, keep your code uh, in kind of compliant with WordPress, but uh, uh, using some uh, some uh, modern PHP features like auto loading. Uh, basically, we have some workarounds that are uh, there in the Juniper itself. So uh, I know that it's not compliant with the PSR, uh, but the what we are using the WordPress uh, standards for is that. Uh, you know, when you are working with the team, uh, then everyone el everyone can have their own setup uh, on the on the local machine. So, as as a setup, I understand the way how you know those spaces, tabs, and so on are being created. And if you are merging this code and everyone has like uh, total freedom in that, then uh, while putting it on the Git, uh, you will see like total. Uh, you will see. A cha changes in every single line, even if there was all only a space uh, has changed on something like that. So basically, uh, with this, we are trying to avoid uh, differences between the, the environments, uh, between the people that are working on the projects. 
Thank you.